So you guys ready for another good adventure today? I just woke up. The uh, Border Patrol went back and forth through here all night long and woke me up like a dozen times. So I'm a little sleepy-eyed, but we got a great day coming up. Sun's just breaking the horizon. We're headed that way to the heart of the Camino del Diablo. And we're going to see some really cool things out there, I promise you. But I do have coffee on and breakfast is ready to be served. Raymond noodles, of course. So I'm going to get to it. Wake up sleepyhead next door and we're going to hit the road. So I decided to go for a quick hike before we take off and before I wake my brother up. And I wanted to show you a few things that are kind of interesting. As I told you uh, in the last video, when we were pulling before, just before we pulled into this camp last night, we're camped on a lava flow. This is an old volcano. I guess the volcano itself is right over there, and it, but it's in Mexico, so we can't go over there. But I wanted to show you some of these rocks. This is actually, you know, old lava. You can see all the bubbles and stuff in it. And, as, and a lot of it, you can actually see where it was flowing, but although I don't see any pieces like that right here. And we're gonna hike out across here a little ways and see if we can see anything really interesting that might be related to that. We're also going to keep our eye open for bombs. This is a bombing range they've used since about World War II. And they do a lot of, uh, did a lot of like strafing runs and stuff and shooting at aerial targets. They had these things they called darts or something like that. And they would tow it, they look like a little airplane and they tow it behind another airplane. And the gunners would shoot at them. And they say that, that the desert is littered with these darts, but they're kind of like big heavy things with wings. From like the World War II era. And uh, they say there's so many out here that they can't even pick them all up. They just gave up. They started to. They just gave up. And they say they're just littered on the desert. I've never seen one, though. So <laughs> I don't think they're littered that much. But we're going to take a quick hike. Maybe bebop down around here. See what that flat air is all about. I think we're too far away from any of the volcanoes to really go. There's the big ones over there, but it's in Mexico. That's probably something that has to do with volcanic activity, too. But that's too far away to hike this morning. That's a couple miles probably. I'll let you know when I see something cool, but stay tuned on this video because we're going to go to the water tanks. You know, the, uh, the only sources of water on this road that when they were dry, you die. D Id. <laughs> I'll be quiet now. Now as we're walking through the sandy area here, you'll notice there's a lot of uh, rodent holes. So you have to be careful because where there's rodents, there's snakes. And where there's snakes, there could be rattlesnake so let's tread lightly you see all the burrows in here last night i heard a lot of coyotes out this way too but i was too tired to get the camera out but you can see where animals have been digging in there trying to get the little little fuzzy creatures the little delicacies see how it just crunches down like that that's because the uh i guess the burrows underneath there <laughs> look at that wow I guess we ought to leave them alone. <clears throat> All right, we'll find something cool out here soon. Well, that was pretty cool, I like that. I guess this is what the coyotes are up to. You can see all these dig holes here. Look at all the dig holes. Unless that's someone metal detecting for rodents. They're kind of old, but uh, that's what they're doing. They're looking for those uh, probably kangaroo rats. Although I'm not positive. That's what they were actually looking for here. Look at this complex. Oh, jeez. Could be careful stepping around here, but look how much dirt they dug out of here. This obviously isn't kangaroo rats. Maybe coyote in there, eh? <laughs> That's as bad as a puff mud. Well, not really. It's a lot better than the puff mud. They say that there are badger, badger, badgers out here, although I've never seen one. And uh, actually cougars too, and not the fun kind. So we'll keep an eye out for tracks and we'll keep our running shoes laced just in case we have to skippy skip back to the truck. I think we'll be okay. If you look here on the ground, you'll notice there's tracks. Those are tracks from like in a four wheeler. And if you look over there, you can see where they're doing donuts. They say that those tracks that actually last decades many 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 decades out here they because they, they don't get a lot of rain and uh you know just kind of unsightly but they can't come out here anymore because this is a national wildlife refuge except for the border patrol <coughs> whoa nelly oh nelly 
we have to watch where we're going. Look at those holes I just fell in. Glad that wasn't a mine shaft. Whoop, there we go again. Whoops, there we go again. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, there's just something satisfying about that because you know you're probably not going to die. Although I guess I could get my ankle snake bit, so I'll think about that next time. All right, let's see, where are we? A little bit of lava right here. We're going to zip out that way across the open plain. Then we'll go back and get my cold coffee and cold noodles and finish breakfast. I just jumped the jackrabbit, but he took off like the wind. They're like huge bunny rabbits. They got giant ears and giant legs, and they run so fast when they want to, you can't even hope to uh, keep up with them. So we'll keep our eyes open. Hopefully we'll see another one that we can sneak up on while he's sleeping. I doubt it, but we'll wanna try. So I'm actually getting a little deeper into the, uh, the lava flow area. And it's really interesting here. I'm enjoying it. Not seeing as many, you know, like animal bars and stuff. I do see a fire ring behind me. Look over there, that's all hardened lava flows that are, you know, crumpled up. But there's a fire ring. Yeah, right over here. Look at this. Very obviously, someone has picked up these rocks and put them into a circle. Not a great circle, but it's a circle. Now, we don't know. That could have been done 100 years ago by uh, people crossing here. 500 years ago by one of the you know, Spanish soldiers or uh, priests. Or 5,000 years ago by one of the uh, nomadic Indian tribes that would, would, might have traveled through this area. Great piece of history. If we had a metal detector and we weren't on federal land, we could listen for little chirps and stuff of uh, chips and <laughs> chips. <laughs> Chirps of iron, look for chips of stone uh, to, to try to get an idea of the age of it. But just looking at it, there's no way to say. But I think it's really cool to see stuff out in an area like this, which is nothing but rocks. I'm circling back around to the camp so I can finish up my breakfast and we can get on the road again. But we're going to explore up in here just a little bit more. More! Because... I have a feeling we're going to see something cool. Ooh. I thought that might be a grave. <laughs> so there's a weird pile of rocks right here. And I, there's graves all over this place. Like I said in an earlier video, there's been like 350 uh, Mexicans that have died out here in recent years that they know of. Those are the bodies that they've actually recovered. And of course, before that, there could have been 3,000 settlers and, uh, you know, the Spanish from the... From 500 years ago, 500 years ago that the English or the uh, Europeans were out here. Uh, but they were dying in this desert because there's very little water. And we're going to explore that today. But their bodies are littered everywhere too. So I have read. Let's work our way up this little wash here. And see what we can see up on top. We're stuck in the rocks down here. Spines. I never thought in a million years I would find a walled fort in the middle of this desert, but we just discovered one. And it's one for the history books, my friends. Cool, look at it. Look at it. Isn't that weird? I love it, absolutely love it. Now, of course, it's not a walled fort for humans, but it's pretty neat. Let's go look up close. I figure it's probably ants. <laughs> it's harvester ants. I think that's what it is. Isn't that beautiful? That's her hole right there. And it's uh, harvester ants, I think, because these are all old seed pods and stuff that they've uh, discarded after they ate them. No longer active. The fort must have been conquered by either a competing tribe or maybe a fungus. <laughs> I don't know. Something killed them though. Well, there's more up here. It's kind of weird how it's up on top like this, but I guess it's all this little sparse grass. There must be some type of seed that they like. This one's active. I can see their little ants. Look at them. Maybe they moved up to higher ground. Moving slow though, because it's pretty cold this morning. Hey little buddy, I want to see him go bow. Come here. 
Come here. Look, I'm gonna start moving. I'm not even doing anything to them, just tapping the rocks. They get mad. Now, I don't know if those are harvester ants. I just know that harvester ants uh, do, do this kind of thing where they take out the seed pods and stuff they've already eaten and they put it out in front of their den. There's another kind of ant out here. Maybe it's the harvester ant, or maybe it's the leaf cutter. I think it's the leaf cutter. That they take the leaves and stuff and they bring it down into their den and they don't actually eat the leaves. What they do is they, um, the, uh, they kind of nurture and fix the leaves so that fungus grows on them, like mold and stuff. And that's what they eat. They actually eat the fungus that grows on the leaves that they bring in. So if I see some of those out here, I'll point them out. You can usually see them because there'll be like lines of them going out into the desert and lines coming back with leaves and stuff in their mouth that they're going to bring down into their dens. Haven't seen any yet on this trip, but if, we, if I do, I'll point them out to you. So have a good life, guys and gals. And listen to your queen. She's very, very important. All right, let's see if we can find the camp. I think it's this way. <laughs> You know how I was telling you guys earlier that this whole area out here was used uh, for gunnery practice back during World War II and up up through, uh, I think, the Cold War. And they warned you to be very careful about munitions and bombs and other things that might be out here. And I just saw a glint, a glint of sunlight in the distance. So I came over here to look at it. And I believe it's a 50 caliber uh, machine gun casing. Go take a look. What do you think? That probably came out of an airplane. Probably. Hope there's no scorpions in it. Oh, that's a pretty one, isn't it? See if it's dated. Nope. It's DM with a four. Some of you guys might be able to date it from that. It's probably not that old by the looks of it, but so be on the watch for these. Now we can't take these because this is government land, so we'll just leave it right back where we found it. But we're gonna look around and see if we can see some more, and maybe some like giant Moab bombs. Well, I hope we don't find one of those, but they say there are bombs out here, so. I saw another glint over here. We're gonna walk in this direction and see what it is, or was, or might not be. <laughs> I think it was a rock, actually. So, oh well, we'll keep moving toward the truck. If I find a giant bomb, I'll let you know. When I was coming up the road this morning on my hike, I did some uh, weird things with my tracks. Like I walked backwards for a while and then I walked on rocks, and then I turned around and walked forward just to see what the Border Patrol would do when I got to my tracks. And here's a guy going really slow. He should be about to my track, so he's going to get out and try to figure out what the heck was going on. Then he's going to come over here and make me show the soles of my boots. <laughs> I'm going to tell him I was just having a fit. Maybe. He should be to him now. And they went by all night long, probably a dozen times. It was kind of crazy. Nah, he went right with the truck. He didn't even see him. So the agent stopped and we talked to him and I asked him about the footprints and how come he didn't see the footprints. Basically, he said it was just too easy. <laughs> he figured it had to be somebody like me. Because, uh, of course, the smugglers would just make a straight line across the road. So we're packing up we're getting ready to take off uh we're going to go up and hit the high tanks and the other wells might make a separate video sorry but i want to include my little walk this morning in the video and i don't want to make it two hours long so we'll see you again tomorrow night